on the web and in your hands. This is MDI TV. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Thus Juliet spoke as she lamented the feud between Capulets and Montagues that kept her apart from Romeo. Now, we aren't here for a Shakespeare lesson, but to look at the power of names in shaping how we view and treat mental health disorders. Half a century ago, depression was rare, while multitudes sought to calm their anxieties. Then beginning in the 1970s, depression diagnoses surged while anxiety waned. In the Millbank Quarterly Journal, sociologist Alan Horwitz argues that what changed was not the afflictions of patients, but how professionals defined them. Back then they were seen as relieving anxiety, relieving tension and stress and not depression. Whereas now they're called antidepressant medications, even though they're basically used for the same sorts of conditions. Horwood says the most popular prescription drug in the 1950s was Milltown, an anxiety treatment. It was dethroned by Librium and then Valium, also anxiety drugs. Then these medications got a bad rap after research surfaced suggesting serious side effects. In the 1980s, researchers paid increasing attention to depression. And then new antidepressant drugs hit the market, eventually surging to sales highs. Meanwhile, a variety of factors pushed mental health research and treatment away from the lives and feelings of patients and toward a sharp focus on brain biology and drug treatment edged out other approaches to dealing with the nervousness, sadness, and malaise that was once called anxiety, but are now associated more often with depression. In part, psychiatrists wanted to be more like their medical colleagues. Science historian Jamie Cohen Cole says they shed Freudian concepts of neuroses in favor of treating the brain like any other organ. Psychiatrists have been looking for have been looking to find a way over since more than a century to pin down the specific diagnostic criteria for the illnesses that which they're seeking to treat. Part of the problem that psychiatry has had all along is that it's a less scientific or biological science. And one of the things that the psychopharmaceuticals offer is a specific treatment for a specific illness. The shift from anxiety to depression accompanied the evolution of the definitions of mental illnesses compiled in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the basic dictionary of psychiatry. The DSM, as it's known, is now undergoing its fifth revision. Observers expect that the new definitions, the names that it gives things that bothers us, will have a powerful influence on how people are treated. And that influence brings attention to the ties between many of the experts revising the DSM and the pharmaceutical companies that produce the drugs matched to DSM diagnoses. More than half of the DSM-5 task force members have ties to the pharmaceutical industry. In light of recent research reviews that question how much relief people with common mild depression get from the most popular antidepressant drugs, Alan Horwitz predicts the new DSM will usher in a new phase of psychiatric treatment, including new marketing campaigns. A draft of the upcoming DSM includes a new diagnosis of mixed anxiety depression. In his review of the history of the ebb and flow of those labels, Horwitz quotes another researcher who cited a pharmaceutical market analysis indicating many people with anxiety disorders are not currently being treated. The analysis says, as a result, drug manufacturers are failing to maximize revenues from the anxiety disorders market. Investment in awareness campaigns is essential. So, be aware.